Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Classical Republican Book Review. Today we're talking again about Philip Pettit's uh, Political Philosophy in Public Life, Civic Republicanism in Zapatero, Spain. Now, this, uh, this is mostly about the, the first part, the Spanish context. And it's about Jose Luis Rodriguez Zapatero. He was a member of the PSOE in the 1990s. Now, the PSOE was an old party, uh, which had been banned during the Franco uh, period. Uh, it was part of the Republican coalition in the 1930s during the Spanish Civil War. So, we must remember that the Franco regime lasted until the late 70s. So, please see my videos on the Spanish Civil War. Zapatero was looking for something to revitalize his party, which was in the opposition at the time. Um, so it was he didn't have a lot of uh, of, uh, of say. Uh, neoliberalism was on the rise since the late seventies in places like the U.S. with Ronald Reagan and uh, the U.K. with Thatcher. Uh, but in the 90s, neoliberalism was taking over left-wing parties, too. Uh, Zapatero read uh, Pettit's Republicanism in the late 90s and ran with it. So he mainly focused on the, the classical Republican principle of non-domination. Now, let me read a paragraph here. This is about, the, um, uh, about his initial... Uh, program. The renovation of the public life, a European and Europeanist rep uh, foreign policy, economic development based on education, research, and innovation, thus creating stable jobs, new social policies oriented to the new necessities of persons and families, and the development and extension of civil and political rights, and of the value of equality to live together in an advanced way. So that was uh, Zapatero in 2004, uh, and this was the five crucial axes. Uh, then the book goes into the ideological history of non-domination in Spain. So the authors explain that critical, critical, I'm sorry, uh, classical, Republican, classical republicanism did not really disappear into liberalism, fascism, socialism, and communism in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, but strains of the principles lived on in certain philosophies and political parties. So they go into the, the history in Spain, how the connection, uh, there's a connection between classical republicanism and socialism in the late 19th and early early 20th centuries. Uh, in Spain, socialism was, uh, was uh, carried on classical republicanism thought through Krausism, and uh, that was um, that's through um, uh, Karl Krause, who was a German political philosopher. And um, so this strain of thought, uh, which uh, found its way into Spanish socialism, uh, was anti-liberal and provided the counterbalance to more radical Marxism and anarchism. anarchism. So um, this strain of political thought, it was socialist, but it was, um, it was, uh, it was, it was anti-liberal, uh, but also non-Marxist and, and not anarchist. Uh, which, you know, anarchism was, was really big in Catalonia during the Spanish Civil War, well, during the, the 30s. So I really learned lots about Spanish intellectual history reading this book, and you should read it if you want to learn that too. Uh, it does a great job of documenting how principles of classical republicanism can be applied in practice at the national level. Long live the Republic.